Find out how Magnus Carlsen earned himself the new nickname of Mr. November. Speaking of the Norwegian, one of these eight men will have the chance to take his title after the candidates, and we try to predict who. Location, location, location. London is announced by Aegon to host the World Chess Championship match next November, and Saudi Arabia gets the nod from FIDE to hold the World Rapid and Blitz despite much controversy. It's a jam-packed episode of Chess Center, which, just like the Brazilian Grandmaster's wife, has no fear. Well, the results are in. The field is set. It's time for Grandmaster Robert Hess to join us and tell us who of these eight men he thinks has the best chance at winning the candidates. While French fans are surely upset that Maxime vachet le failed to qualify for the candidates tournament, there are eight worthy contenders vying for a spot at the 2018 World Chess Championship. We start with 2016 challenger, the Russian Minister of Defense, Sergei Karyakin, who put up a fight against Magnus Carlsen last time around and looks to gain a rematch. We move on to the World Cup champion, the Armenian maestro, Levan Aronian, who fills his pockets with novelties and in fact beat Carlsen in a crushing game this past year. We move on to the runner-up at the World Cup, Chinese superstar Ding Li Ren, who is a youngster looking to make a name for himself on the world's biggest stage. The winner of the Grand Prix events is Shakriar Mamajar of Azerbaijan. The aggressive attacker can beat anyone at any moment, and his rating has skyrocketed to 2,800 in this past year. Second place in the Grand Prix events is Alexander Grishuk. He's well known by his name Sasha, and while it was a surprise to some that he made it this far, he was a worthy contender back in the 2011 candidates and just missed out. Fabiano Caruana, the number one American player, is known to the world for his 7-0 performance at the Sinkfield Cup back in 2014. Here, he's trying to get to face Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship for the first time, but he's going to have to get through his compatriot, Wesley So. Wesley So was on fire in 2016, slumped quite a bit in 2017, but he led his team to the Olympiad gold medal and can at any moment strike gold. The last but not least contender is Vladimir Kromnik, the wild card. Just because he got in by selection does not mean that he's not a contender this time around, and the former world champion is looking to regain his crown. Well, you set the stage well, so the big question has to come to you. Robert, who do you think is going to win? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me thrice, I don't even know what to say. But I'm going with Levon Aronian. Yes, he's disappointed in past candidates events, but he's playing an absolute fire lately, and he's over 2,800 and looks to be in the best shape of all these contenders. Joining us live from London for the latest news is the one and only Peter Dockers. Hi, Danny. Yeah, I'm in London here at the Google headquarters where the first round of the London Chess Classic is underway as we speak. But uh, no, I want to talk about something else, actually. Uh, the eve before the tournament, uh, there was a press uh, meeting organized by World Chess and the London Evening Standard. And there the big news was announced that uh, next year the World Championship match uh, where Magnus Carlsen will be defending his title will be held in London. Huge news. What was Magnus's reaction when Aegon revealed London as the location? Yeah, Magnus was uh, clearly uh, uh, happy about the news uh, and he had prepared uh, some uh, some small uh, jokes. Uh, he was, for example, uh, noticing that uh, noting that uh, the first world title match he was following was the one between uh, Kasparov and Kramnik here in London, but uh, then also mentioned that uh, this one actually wasn't uh, organized uh, by FIDE. Uh, it was, of course, a PCA match, and uh, FIDE's Georges Macropoulos, the p deputy president, he, uh, he smiled uh, hearing about that. And, uh, and then Magnus continued uh, saying that he wants to be the first world champion to win a game in a world title match since 1993. Fun to see Magnus delivering the zingers in a speech like that, and we're all excited about the news of the world championship match being in London. After the move, Bishop H6 was played by the Norwegian Jan Ludwig Hammer. It seemed like White's attack was about to come crashing through on the G-file, but tell everybody what Peter Svidler had in store for his unsuspecting opponent here, Simon. Yeah, a really nice counter blow here. Now Svidler plays knight to g4. And this move basically blocks the g-file, but also creates attack against the bishop on h6, giving Svidler a very useful tempo. The game now continued. Rook takes g4. And here the e-pawn crowns itself on e1. e8 queen. 
we have an exchange on e1 and actually the game ends up leading to mate with the king running out to g3 and after king h4 queen takes h6 and this is one of the main ideas of that knight jump in the first place so very nice game by fiddler there Danny. we've always known you were a fan of mates of all kinds so i should have figured you would have picked a checkmate to start off this month's chess center but let's move on to the next game where anish giri seems to have defended his attack as black in this position he has just played the move g5 at the candidates but tell everybody what levon aronian had in store uh, for his Dutch opponent. Well, Danny, that's right. I mean, I, I've been called a bit of a caveman myself, and I, I do love going for the mate when I can. And uh, in this position, the computer actually recommends white to retreat the knight. But no, no, no. Here, queen to d1. And this is a beautiful move. The queen swings itself over into the attack. So pawn takes h4. And here, just rook takes h4. And you can see that the Harry file, the h file is going to come. Rook d8, queen h5. King to f8, and so now rook g4, increasing the pressure, bishop f6, and here bishop to h6 check, chasing that king down. The king runs away, but now rook g8 check, and a lovely final move after king d7, d6, winning the black queen. And actually, black resigned here because there's a rook d1 check in, in a lot of positions, and this will just pick up that queen and uh, win the game. So, uh, yeah, never retreat, Danny. That's, that's a good motto sometimes, I believe. Time for the best moments from the month of November, leading it off, International Master Anna Rudolph. Thank you, Danny. Our third place goes to Stockfish for winning the first ever Chess.com Computer Chess Championship, beating Houdini in the finals. Number two is going to go to Fabiano Caruana and Wesley So. Both of them completed epic, and they were epic comebacks at the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz event, completing a clean sweep for the Americans there in St. Louis with Hikaru Nakamura having also won his match. And the first place goes to Magnus for being Magnus, winning everything after Isle of Man, two speed chess championships, the title Tuesday, St. Louis match against Ding Li Ren, and also having his birthday just a few days ago. He's definitely Mr. November. Peter rejoining us from Google headquarters in London to share the thoughts on the big news that Saudi Arabia will host the World Rapid and Blitz. Yeah, Danny, there was, of course, a surprising location for the next World Rapid and Blitz Championship uh, announced very late by, uh, by FIDA and uh, now in a country that is not exactly known uh, for holding up its uh, human rights. And uh, especially for women uh, there, the situation is, is not uh, the greatest. Um, in fact, as soon as uh, FIDA announced this, uh, this location, uh, Hikaru Nakamura, one of the best uh, speed chess players in the world, uh, made it clear that he's not going to play there. He doesn't like uh, this location, mostly because it's called the World Championship and, uh, and everybody should be able to play. And uh, normally speaking, uh, Qatari people and uh, Israeli people uh, are not allowed to, uh, to enter uh, Saudi Arabia. But FIDA has announced that uh, there might be a possibility that uh, people from those countries are getting visas. But uh, nonetheless, for example, uh, Anna Muzichuk, who uh, holds both the Rabbit and Blitz title at the moment, still does not want to travel there. Uh, she does not need to wear an abaya during the games, but probably when she wants to leave the hotel, she has to. She also needs to be accompanied by a male uh, person. Uh, she doesn't like all that, so uh, she will lose both her titles. She will not be playing. Well, a lot of negativity there from top players. Are there any top players who are happy to play in the event despite it being in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, absolutely. There are players such as uh, Sergei Karyagin and uh, Vasily Ivanchuk who are defending uh, their titles. Kisha Anand will be playing and, uh, and actually also the reigning classical world champion uh, Magnus Carlsen. And when I asked him about it, he said, um, I'm not criticizing uh, the players who are not going and I uh, expect them not to criticize me for, for going. The third worst thing to happen in the chess world in the month of November goes to Fide and Aegon or the organizing committee who decided it was a good idea to use non-weighted rating systems. That exact system is what left Maxime Vache de Grave out in the cold, the outside looking in at the 2018 candidates, even though we all know he deserved to be there. The second spot goes to St. Louis for their experimental blitz format where there was no increment. That led to crazy games couple of unfair results and, for instance, this game by Wesley So. 
Everyone remembers the blood on the clock. But number one goes to the four Italian players who were convicted by a federal court. That's right. Not the Italian Chess Federation, a federal court for their involvement in a massive game rigging, manipulating of ratings, cheating scandal that was written about on chess.com. And everyone can check it out. We don't want these things in the chess world. And we certainly don't want it to be headlining news for anyone who plays chess. It doesn't get more exciting when you see the best chess players in the world make massive blunders. So, Simon, take it away and give us our first one where Fabiano Caruana, well, he blew a plus about a full pawn advantage against Sasha Grishuk in St. Louis. Tell everybody how he did it. Yeah, I mean, this is quite unbelievable, Danny. And it, like you said, it gives us all hope when we see these great players blunder because I'm sure me and you have done this many a time ourselves, Danny. But here, White plays Rook to B5. And this is uh, an incredible blunder because look at the assessment there at the computer. It drops <laughs> right. so much. And after Rook to E1, Danny, well, it's checkmate next move. So that has to be up there with one of the biggest blunders of all time by a player like well, Fabiano. Maybe not the biggest blunder of all time because then we moved on to a game from the Speed Chess Championship where once again Sasha Grishuk was on the receiving end of an amazing gift. Unfortunately it wasn't enough for him to beat Magnus Carlsen but he did get the better of this game. Tell everybody the one move self-mate that Magnus Carlsen played here. Yeah again astonishing. I, mean, I know it's the festive season Danny but they're, they're giving gifts a little bit too early at the moment and uh, the move F7 well, there goes Freddy about to queen. But now, bishop to d7. Checkmate, Danny. Uh oh. <laughs> not, not quite in time. Well, the checkmate yeah. was delivered by Sasha Grishik. And before we let everyone go, as you said, it is the giving season. And we have to surprise Simon here. A little bit of a gift. We make fun of him when we can. So we also have to reward his amazing play when we can. In this position, Black played the move rook h8. And your own game... And uh, you came up with, with something rather nasty, finding the move, the only move for White to have a crushing attack here. We'll give Rook H8 a blunder from your opponent, but tell everybody the brilliant move you played. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe it's a bit more desperation here, but uh, I've got a lot of pieces on pre, Danny, and that, that often kind of happens to me. Yeah, probably yeah. Probably because, you know, I'm just a bit of a giver, Danny, Seriously, basically. Seriously, every single piece is attacked here. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, yep. It is, and I thought I'd put some more on pre, so I played uh, Rook takes F6, and... The idea of this is that, well, now black can win my queen, which he does with bishop takes h3, but I get a very big attack after rook takes f7, king g8, and now, okay, I took on h3, and after knight c6, my bishop comes to the light squares, bishop e4, and we can quickly see my bishops are working their magic, coming in with a couple of checks there, and uh, yeah, it was a nice move to play, Danny, that rook to f6, and around here... I was pretty confident I was going to uh, win the game. Knight to e4, and e7's completely dropping. A little bit complicated, but, uh, but occasionally enough. I can still play OK chess, Danny. Occasionally. Occasionally <laughs> you can, and you really did the job here, as we see after the subtle knight to g3, the rook on e1 reopened up. White wins every piece on the board, and if you want to back up and take a quick look at it, go ahead and try to challenge uh, Simon's sack, but it was it was a brilliant one and a great attack, nothing like a queen sack, to bring our chess segments to a close here on Chess Center. Chess.com's own Louisa Thomas published a unintentionally controversial piece this week, diving into the history of the Lucina position, but the controversy in the comment section really was focused on the style and the angle that she took in telling her story. We like to bring in Alexandra when we have these types of controversial issues in chess, and so on that note, Miss Botez, your thoughts? I think the first thing to keep in mind is that Louisa is a professional writer, not a professional chess player. She plays more for the fun of it, it seems, from the article. When we check out chess.com articles, we're normally there because we expect to see some really technical chess analysis, learn more about the position. But she took a more interesting angle. She talked about the history behind the position and her own struggle trying to figure out the solution. So if you're looking for a more technical piece, it might not be for you. But if you want to learn more about a position that you may have studied hundreds of times but still don't know the history to it, then this was great. 
the part that stirred the biggest controversy was her decision to use the she pronoun when talking about a player who was learning this position. Some of the comments were a little bit harsh. Oh, she's being sexist. She doesn't know how to use grammar. But in reality, it seemed like she was using the she pronoun because she was talking about her own journey. So the chess player who was learning also seemed to relate to her own experience trying to figure out this position, studying late one night on the kitchen table. Yeah, and it seems that obviously there's a split audience here. And so we'll ask the viewers now, leave a comment here, whether you're watching this on chess.com, Twitch, or YouTube. Was it an artistic personal story that deserved the she pronoun, or did you find it in the chess community as something that was out of place? Let us know your thoughts, and we look forward to seeing more of the community's reaction. Aryan Tari won the World Junior this November. What are the chances you think he ever rivals Magnus Carlsen in Norway, Mike? I'm not sure, but I think Magnus is going to help him out because Magnus is big on winning every event once, and if he wants to win Olympiad Team Gold, he's going to need Arian to step up and be a solid board too. Another young player, Pragnananda, just got his first Grandmaster Norm. What are the chances, Danny, that he overtakes Anand one day? I'm going to give a similar answer to what you just did. I don't think he ever rivals Anand's legacy, but I bet Anand will have a hand in helping him get better before all is said and done. The field is set for the candidates, and 538 has already projected their winner. Aronian seems like a trendy pick. That's right, Danny. Hottest player on the planet. He's won the last three events he's played in, and interestingly, he's never lost a chess game as a married man, so careful tiptoeing in my own house. <laughs> um, sticking with the candidates, though, the final qualifying event in Mallorca was played in a hotel that was closed down for the winter. Danny, is this the chess version of The Shining? I follow Chess Mike on Twitter, and I saw your very, very appropriate, I think a good comparison tweet. Mike, speaking of following you on Twitter, HBO finally released their piece about whether Donald Trump is really playing 3D chess. What were your thoughts on how it turned out? Well, uh, I didn't know this, but I was going to be the straight man, the Mountain Dew guy that plays 3D chess in his garage in Illinois. That guy stole the show. If you haven't seen his victory dance, well, you're about to see it right here. And finally, Danny, you're married. What would it be like if your wife played 1F4 and beat you in 23 moves in a game of chess? I will never know what that feels like because my wife doesn't play chess, but I can tell you one man who does, <coughs> GM Fear. Peter Doggers rejoining us from Google headquarters in London to share... Why am I an idiot this morning? I need coffee. Am I telling you? You to know relax? that I'm messing what, up. What's when happening Peter here? Peter is telling me to relax. Okay, exactly. I need to relax. You're right. Okay, here we go. All right, restarting. Hold on. Go to the huge scandal that came out and was written about from Italy, where four players were convicted. Convicted. Uh, let, let's redo it. <laughs> Peter Dockers rejoins us from Google headquarters in London to talk about the controversial announcement that Saudi Arabia. Blah, 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 that was shorter, but then I fed up. We then have, oh, did I not mention the World Cup? By the way, you are doing great. And it must be said that the World Chess Organization managed to find an or, uh, location, sorry, 